process, um, because each submitter has a very short time, everyone has read the submissions. Yes. Take for granted everyone has read them thoroughly. Yes. Could we suggest that um, they use their time to either elaborate on their submission or give us time to answer, ask questions because otherwise they're not getting full value for their Correct. time. Correct. So could you, could you keep re reiterating keep that? Keep repeating that. Yeah. Yeah, you did that last year, Chair, and I thought you did a good job last year of saying, yeah. remember, you have this much time. I just did, I just did that before these oh, guys started. Yeah. You've got good memory, uh, yeah. Councillor Graham. Thank you, thank you, uh, I'm just going to say, for once, I agree with Councillor Scott. <laughs> 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 Long-term memory only. Long-term memory. Very selective, I think, That's uh, right. Um, Aramoana Environmental and Education Charitable Trust, Mr Hanson. Good morning, sir. Councillors, this submission is in part five, page 18. Okay, good morning. Um, so you've, you've seen how it all works. I push the button, you get 10 minutes, um, but if you wish us to ask you questions, please keep your presentation a little shorter and give us some time in, in the 10 minutes, so thank you. Thank you, Mr <coughs> Chairman um, and councillors for the opportunity to come and talk to you. Just um, before I start, um, some of you know me for the various hats I wear. Um, the hat I'm wearing today is that of the General Manager of the Aramoana Environmental Education Charitable Trust. Um, we should have a PowerPoint. Hopefully. Um, I've got some copies of information here, 16 copies. Um, you won't need those. Um, I'll leave them with you. Um, yep. Good use of time, Councillor. There you go. Um, thank you, Mr um, Hanson, and my congratulations on rising from the phoenix, as you, you have down there, huh. uh, like the phoenix. Um, the, how much help do you get in kind now from Regional Council? What sort of contribution to that area are you receiving in kind? Uh, well, nothing really at present. You're not working with any of our staff over this? Uh, not at this stage, okay. no. Thank you. Um, just the Aramoana, oh, you haven't got a laser pointer by any chance? No, it doesn't matter. But the northern side of the stream there, you can see a, a line of trees up the back there. There's, there's 14 acres of land. I say acres because when it was gifted, it was still back then. Um, of land that's um, Crown Reserve vested in Central Hawke's Bay District Council. Um, it was gifted in 1970 by the late Douglas and Mary McCarty. Uh, the purpose of the gift was to ensure public access to the beach. The legal road ended at the Oipota Strait. My understanding is they went to Italy and had to pay to go to some of the beaches and they didn't want this to happen in Hawke's Bay. Um, the gift was accepted by the Minister of Crown Lands, Duncan McIntyre, and the title was put into Patongata County Council. And due to a series of council mergers over the years, it's ended up in the CHB District Council, the title. Um, as I said, the, the, legal, the legal access to Aramoana ended at that gate at the bridge. Uh, 2004, as part of the development resource consent, the developers had to form and seal the road, car park picnic area and gift it. Um, and what that did was secured legal access to the beach and changed the the requirement for Oipoto a little bit. So from the bridge, perhaps we could stand up here. This is the bridge, this is where the legal access ended. This is now in council ownership all the way to the beach, picnic area, car park, toilets. Um, and this is the Oipoto Reserve, this land through here. Um, in recent years, the New Zealand Doctoral, which New Zealand Doctoral is rural in Kaikaka or Kiwi, has been found breeding uh, in the Oipoto Reserve along with the voice of Catch and many others. I put this in here, something, it's not a great photo, but there's a couple of doctors and there's an oyster catcher sitting on a nest. So it just proves its sort of significance environmentally. Sorry if I'm racing through this. This little bit is written in your submission. Um, it tells you all about it, so there's not much point in me reading all that out. It tells you what we're intending to do. We've started. Um, that's the walkway through it. The walkway will be one kilometre long. Um, here we support it. Um, that's all written in here, so I won't read all that out. Um, development costs are around 60,000 to complete the project. So um, Central Hawke's Bay District Council and the Department of Conservation have both put in $10,000 each towards the project. 
Walking Access New Zealand are contributing 3,900. There's a little bit of land we're swapping around. There's about 25,000 in surveying fees. We've got a guy doing it for three nine. Um, he's donating the rest. And that's a little bit what this is all about. It's not about um, any individual or any group. It's about being the, being the um, centre for everybody to sort of put their oar in. Hatuma have given um, 420 tonne of lime to the project. And you can see there now we've started forming the walkway uh, where it comes in by the bridge. Uh, and then we'll start the native planting and a lot of the enhancement work. One of the things we're looking at possibly doing up there, some of you will be familiar with the bird viewing platform that's sort of shared between DOC and Regional Council out at Ahuriri here. We're looking at putting one of those in because it's becoming quite a significant area for these DOC to breed and other birds. Each year we take the beach off from here all the way through. The dock was nest up here, all the birds nest up here, they feed here. Uh, the oyster catches, the dock tours are significant, but the Siberian godwits arrive in their droves and it's almost like they know where the fence is because they all go and sit behind it. So our submission basically is that we're asking that the regional council contribute $10,000 towards the establishment of the project, really. Um, and that's it, simple as that. Questions, I've got one to kick off. 10,000 10, cash, or is, is there some in-kind opportunity there from us, i.e. Um, I. plants and et cetera? Well, I think, I think uh, anything um, is possible, Mr Chairman. I think um, if Council wanted to put in and tag, I mean, there's plenty to be done, there's platform to be done, there's several options. So there's, you know, whatever the trust gets, the trust gets, and would be extremely help, um, happy for the Council to tag what they're wanting to do. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dick. Uh, thanks very much. That, that's Sorry, a one-off right. request. Sorry, one-off. One-off. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think what this is proving is that if we put council, <coughs> district council, doc, regional council in the pot, one-off, that's the end of it. Mm. Then the trust can go, you know, Eastern and Central and those type agencies look very favourably and say the community and all the councils and the government agencies are favouring this. Let's get into bed with it. So I'm confident that we can get the rest of the funding and move forward. Okay. So, uh, ha well, how do you handle your operational costs? Uh, our operational costs are, are completely in kind. Uh, there is no in our trust. There is uh, we rely completely on on the funds that we receive, and there is no payments to anybody. Everybody does what they do completely um, for charitable purposes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? I, I think my question might have been asked. So you've got um, 20,000 out of the councils there, you want 10,000 out of, so you've got 60 you're going to get out of local We've charities. got 10 out of doc, 10 out of council, yeah. asking you guys for 10. That's 30. We'll yeah. look at the rest elsewhere. Yep. Okay. Out of trusts. And yeah. And that can be an ongoing thing. It doesn't have to be done all in one year, but what this will do is get this established to the point that it's there. Um, Hannah Wilcox has been talking to us, who's regional council's enviro lady, I believe now. Um, so we'll get the schools involved with some of the planting through the regional council shade houses and the likes as well. I think the thing that really stands out is it's really a regional venue. It's not a central Hawke's Bay venue. Um, you know, people are coming from all over Hawke's Bay to that coast and, and so much of our coast is getting locked up through, through subdivision where this is actually doing the opposite. Another question. So, and your trust, is it entirely to do with this project? No. Nope. Uh, our trust, trust does other things. Yep, our trust uh, is basically by its name, that's why it's got such a blooming long name. We do environmental and education charitable work. We work very closely with the department, who I'm employed by, um, of conservation to do um, visitor facilitation at the Marine Reserve. Anything to do with education and environment, we'll do it. Um, so I see we started, we started with the restoration project that I think Councillor Scott mentioned that Te Yangi Yangi after the storm, 2011 storm, I'm just watching the clock. 2011 storm did incredible damage down there. It was the greatest earth movement since the 31 quake. We raised between some of the government agencies and our work $45,000 and we've put it back together. So I see this as we started at Blackhead in the south and we're working our way north and we want to keep coming. And if we keep coming all the way to Napier, that's fine. Thank you. Other, other questions? All right, Mr Chairman, there's a planting plan on there, and I thank you all very much for your time. And we thank you. Yeah, very thank good. you. 
Right. Well, we, we do actually have Hastings District Council here. So, Mr. Maguire, are you um, happy to leap into the le leap into it? Thank you. We we did have a break for an internal submission, but we understand you're a, you're a busy man. Need to get back to the coal face, all that sort of stuff. So, uh, we might as well um, have our chat now. So, Mr. Chairman, that's part two on page I sixteen. Part two, page I sixteen. <coughs> On the countdown, I see, Mr. Chairman. Are you? You could you could crib a bit off the other guy if you were. You no, were, I, I, if you were quick, uh, Mr. Chairman. I don't um, propose to uh, take too long. Uh, for those who are not familiar with me, my name's Mike McGuire. I'm the Group Manager of Corporate and Customer Services at the Hastings District Council. Um, I'm here to present the council submission. Uh, it was hoped that His Worship the Mayor could have been here today. Unfortunately, he's. He's out of town on business, so he's un unable to assist us. And the Deputy Mayor, who would have come, is busy at a hearing, the district plan hearing. So um, for that reason, I've been asked to come. Uh, I, uh, I, I just want to address probably uh, two or three aspects of, our, of the Council submission. And, uh, and I'm happy to answer questions about the balance. As, as well as I can. I think uh, if I just turned in our submission, we dealt with a number of matters, uh, and I just want to uh, touch on some of the things that we think are, are more significant in that submission. And uh, in particular, I want to address um, the issue of climate change, which uh, we agree that that is one of the big six issues to be addressed uh, going forward, uh, both in the in in your plans and in our plans, and uh, we think that attention uh, needs to be turned to the impacts on the longer term economic prospects of the district and region, and some of the elements such as changing growing conditions and how the community can adapt and even capitalise on these, as well as coping with uh, the challenges that extreme climatic hazards and vulnerabilities create for us. Uh, and to that regard, we support, and we've listed in our submission 12 elements that we support that's in the regional plan, um, particularly uh, um, developing the coastal ha hazard strategy uh, from Clifton to Tangoyo, and, uh, and, and equally as important research into viable and resilient farming systems. So that range of our submission we think is, is important and I would be uh, not doing my job if I didn't refer to that particularly. Uh, and we're very familiar with the challenge that um, the coastal hazards are creating for our community, particularly in the Clifton Tangoyo area. Uh, the other element of our submission that uh, I wanted to cover um, is this uh, issue of the um, the request for additional funds from uh, Hawke's Bay Tourism. Uh, and I think I want to make four points about that. One is that um, the underlying premise of that campaign uh, is that uh, Hawke's Bay is not doing well enough in the area of uh, capturing a share of the tourism market. And something needs to change if we're going to do that. And on that basis, the council um, supports uh, a campaign approach that enhances and increases the, the visibility of, of Hawke's Bay in the tourism market. Uh, our own tourism and, market and marketing and communications team works closely with Hawke's Bay tourism in that area. and. Uh, we believe they have the ability to deliver effective programs and that they need additional support. But there is a, a hook to that, to that position of the council and that relates to the 
understanding that tourism is only one part of regional economic development. And, and in that context, we think Hawke's Bay Tourism needs to be part of the REDS program in terms of developing the regional economic development strategy and that the additional funding we're talking about uh, needs to be provided for but not committed until the part that tourism fits in that overall strategy is, is clearly enunciated and resolved. To do so, I don't think is, would be wise. I think it's an important component of our economic development, but we cannot deal with it in isolation to the balance of economic development, and to do so would be a mistake. That's uh, the, our position. And there are a range of other things in the plan that we do support, uh, particularly uh, uh, an allocation of additional funds uh, for yearly maintenance at Tomato Park. Uh, my own council will be considering in the next couple of days uh, submissions relating to Tomato Park and to funding as well. And uh, um, we know that's an ongoing challenge for, for the whole of the Hawke's Bay community. Um, we don't think Tomato Park is just a Hastings issue, we think it's a regional uh, significant place and we need to work out how best to provide for it going forward. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. That, that'll, that'll excite a couple of questions. Councillor Belford. <coughs> uh, thanks Mike. As a experienced uh, public service manager, if an entity came to you that was spending $850,000 a year and asked to double that amount in the next year, would you feel that was a prudent thing to do? If I was satisfied that what was being proposed was necessary and appropriate, then it may well be. And what we're saying is that we think there is a need to change what we're doing with tourism and that uh, this is one way of dealing with it. Councillor Dick. Oh, thanks, Mike. Um, tourism again. Uh, you're saying that the Hawke's Bay tourism is not necessarily uh, linked up with uh, business Hawke's Bay. Um, it, but in the original uh, regional economic development strategy, and I, I chaired the committee that put that together, they, they were definitely in there. And the, the, they were part, they were, uh, uh, they participated in the collaborative process of, with regular meetings. I know they're not in the same building, but you're telling me that um, somehow or another they've, um, they're not part of the plan at present. I, th I think my, underst my understanding, and I stand to be corrected if I'm wrong, but my understanding is they're not part of the team developing the red strat the strategy. So uh, what we're saying is that economic development is an important element in our, in our mm. econ and uh, tourism is an important element mm. of economic development. We think we need to make sure that, they're appropriate, that it's appropriately recognised and provided for in the red strategy, and that's what we're saying. Mm. Uh, and our understanding is they're not sitting around the table as that strategy is being developed. Uh, and I think that's an issue we're saying. Uh, the other part of that is that we're also saying is that that funding shouldn't be committed until we're convinced there is a convincing argument that the part of the red strategy that is that needs to be about uh, tourism uh, supports that expenditure. Right. Well, we'll certainly have a question for them along those lines when they present. I'd be concerned if that was the case. <coughs> we'll find out in due course. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Mr Maguire. Could you just clarify under your point 3.4 about this um, provisional um, approval of funding subject to REDS, um, where do you see the economic development um, money? Are you supporting the current level, an increase in that, which is what I thought was provisional? Now I'm hearing that it's the um, Hawke's Bay tourism money provisional on this. So what's your council's position on the economic development funding level? Uh, through you, Mr Chairman, I, uh, we, we're supportive of an increase in economic development. Not, we think not, not dependent on the outcome of REDS? Oh, we think REDS is an element, a part, yeah. part of that. Yeah. I mean, so it's, it's a whole picture. Councillor Graham. 
I just want to, uh, thanks Mike, I appreciate your presentation. Um, I just want to look at that tourism thing again. Um, if, um, do, uh, does Hastings, if they looked hard at the numbers, um, the predicted, and do they believe the numbers that um, if, if, if we make that kind of investment we can get 5% um, growth every year? Because that's what it comes down to in the end, I guess. What's Hastings' view on that? Well, I can only um, reflect on uh, the view of the of the professionals in that area, our, our marketing communications team, and they believe we need to actually up the game. I, I from a personal perspective, whether the total amount's the right number, I don't know. I think that's why we're saying make allowance for it and look at it in the context of the red strategy. I, th I think there is a balance here somewhere, and finding the right balance is important. I I wouldn't. I couldn't put my hand on my heart, my hand on my heart, and say, "Well, if we spend an extra nine hundred thousand dollars every year for the next five years, we're going to get five percent growth every year." Uh, I think that's one of the risks you take uh, when you make that sort of investment. It's, I guess, it's a bit like uh, a suggestion that if uh, I double my expenditure in uh, some health program that year on year I'll get an improvement in that part of the health program. You certainly make a difference. How to quantify that is, is very hard going forward. Thank you, Mr Maguire. That's our time done. Um, thank you for your submission and uh, having the, the short straw, it seems like, to present it. Good on you. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. We'll be back to you in due